All right, guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Now, Elite Dangerous is rapidly approaching a full four years since release. Added to that, many of us were actually playing the game close to a year before release. So, with that in mind, I want to step back in time for a moment and take a look at the early parts of the game. Just what was it like during the alpha and beta phases of Elite Dangerous? So, I began playing Elite Dangerous in early 2014 close to a year before it was fully released. This wasn't the earliest people or point no people could jump in at. That would have been December 2013 at the game's alpha launch. The entire test period for Elite lasted around about one year, and there were a lot of standout, extremely impressive moments back then as the game moved through its alpha, beta, and the final gamma tests. Perhaps what hit the hardest was the sheer potential any first impression gave for the game. It was a world filled with possibilities, pointed towards wonderful things over the horizon. The first alpha phase then was, as you might expect, very basic. This included a single player combat build that allowed players to test out many of the game's combat mechanics from weapons to shields and even the heat mechanics. The testing period was bolstered by the constant communication from Frontier which came in the form of detailed newsletters and video development diaries. The alpha lasted until April 2014, with four different phases occurring during that period, the first three of which were limited to a single area of space without any hyperspace jump capabilities or even any supercruise capabilities. Alpha Phase 2 opened up multiplayer along with a number of scenarios, such as defending a crippled battlecruiser. The idea was to test the multiplayer aspects, but also to demonstrate the fluid choices and roles players would ultimately be able to experience. Credits were also introduced here, with the ability for players to earn them and then purchase new ship loadouts. Alpha 3 contained a docking tutorial, and perhaps for the first time this truly highlighted the scale of objects within the game. The space stations, as we know now, are truly massive. Now what was interesting about the first three phases of Alpha is that they were essentially set within a box of space, and not within the galaxy the game eventually came to be set in. If you look at the videos from Alpha 1 through to Alpha 3, you can see the background is distinctly different from what we see now, and that's because it was a generated image rather than the actual game's galaxy that we currently have. This changed with Alpha 4 though, which finally connected all the previous systems together by adding in supercruise as well as a galaxy map. The planetary ring systems of course were truly unlike anything else, the sense of scale here was almost overwhelming all the more so if you were fortunate enough to have access to virtual reality. At that point in time, ring systems like this was entirely something very new, and I can't actually think of any other gaming example that was comparable. The bottom line then is that Alpha 4 opened up fully complete game loops. Whether you wanted to do a little bit of trading, or head off to explore a ring system, or even travel into deep space, this was all possible. So that took us up to the Premium Beta phase, which initially, with Premium Beta 1, was a copy of Alpha 4. Elite back then was locked to just a couple of star systems, I think it was three in fact, but we knew that eventually there would be a full galaxy to explore. And people all of quick, very quickly began building the framework for exploration groups. The first of these was the first great expedition, perhaps the earliest organisation in the entire game in fact. Whilst the premium beta phase was initially locked to just a small number of star systems, this soon began to expand. Eventually, there was a good number of star systems, all contained within a visible bubble that marked the edge of the explorable space. It's likely this was where the term in the inhabited bubble originated, and in the end, this bubble became pill-shaped before it finally disappeared altogether. Now, players could fully explore the interior of this area, whilst on the galaxy map, we could see outside of the bubble but we just couldn't travel beyond it. That all changed in Elite's final testing phase, the so-called Gamma period. At this point, the galaxy was fully opened up, and in short, players now had access to the final version of the game, but that's jumping ahead quite a bit. So heading back to the Premium Beta phase, even back then, Elite had an iterative design process, as highlighted with how Alpha worked. Premium Beta followed the same pattern, and throughout all of this, Frontier provided the community with a constant stream of updates, with uh, newsletters in particular highlighting the direction of the game, as well as giving players a clear picture of what to expect around the next corner. 
Now Premium Beta 2 continued to expand the galaxy by adding in the three new star systems. Yes, we finally got up to five or six star systems. And they also added the addition of a, what was then a new uh, Orbis space station. Now the scope of the game just continued to grow. Whilst the Premium Beta only had two main phases, the game went into a further period of beta testing in July of 2014. And up until this point, the game had been exclusively played in open mode. Though it wasn't called that at that particular point, as open mode was the only way to play the game. But with Beta 1, however, Frontier split the game into two distinct modes, open and solo. And so that brings us up to about halfway through the alpha beta development phase of the game. It really was an interesting time for Elite, with huge amounts of possibilities and huge amounts of potential. And it's a great time to take a look back at seeing what it was all about. Hopefully it's an interesting insight to those players who were not around at the time, and for those who were, hopefully it's a nice nostalgic look down memory lane. Now I will be taking a look at the second half of the game's early development in a future video, and a lot of content actually got added very fast during the rest of 2014, so we're going to have a look at that very soon. But for now, that brings us to the end of this video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.